Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and it is that time of the year again. Top 5 gaming mice, in my opinion. And in a few weeks, there's going to be a top 5 wireless only. Because I know some people are going to be extremely triggered by the fact that there are wired mice in this list. So to please you, there will be a video in a few weeks when I get some of the new wireless mice coming out. Um, but yeah, top 5 list. Gonna get right into it with number 5, two mice. These wireless EC clones, the Model D wireless and the Pulsar X Lite wireless. Out of these two, personally, I prefer the Model D wireless. And they are at the number five position, not my absolute favorite mice. But if you're looking for an ergo, whether it be for palm or claw grip with like medium to large hands, these are what I would be looking for. They're both, um, well, the Model D wireless is 80, Pulsar X Lite 75. And for those prices, you get a well-implemented 3370 sensor, kill 8.0s. But both of these mice have their flaws. For example, Model D wireless battery life, absolutely terrible with RGB on. And the Pulsar X Lite wireless, mine is a bit creaky and flexy. I don't like the way the main buttons feel. Wait, why is this mouse even on the top five list? Um, now that I think about it, I think number five is just the Model D wireless. Very real and raw, taking it off in real time. Um, now, number four, fuck, it's not even plugged in, but the Hello Kitty Viper Mini. Nah, I gotta plug this. Okay, there it is. Look at that, the RGB Hello Kitty logo. But obviously, um, this is a special edition Viper Mini. The standard ones are only $30, and for that price, it is just the best budget mouse. The stock cable on the Viper Mini is pretty stiff, but at this point, it is basically impossible to find a vendor selling a paracord, so I would recommend just going with a bungee and living with the stock cable. Maybe Razer will do a Viper Mini Ultimate. Um, but yeah, for $30, there is just so little to complain about. In my experience on multiple units, all of the buttons have been great quality. The optical switch is some of the lowest delay out of any mouse. Just, it's insane how much they fit in at the budget price. I've always been a huge fan of the Viper Mini, and yeah, if you're looking for a cheap mouse from this video, this is the one. As I'm sure many people know by now, the shape is similar to the Ultralight 2, but it is taller, the hump is higher up in the back, so it's a bit safer for people with larger hands and claw grip users. And I would say that the Viper Mini is just the perfect mouse. If you haven't given small and light mice a try, it's a solid mouse to uh, just try it out with. It's not going to break the bank. And aside from the stock cable and the fixable LOD issues, there's just so little to complain about. Um, so yeah, number four, Viper Mini. Number three, the Endgame Gear XM1R. And even though Endgame Gear hasn't done anything in a long time, the XM1R is still, in my opinion, one of the best mice, which goes to show how little, like, boundary pushing is actually going on with mice right now. But yeah, the XM1R, um, when it came out, they really got a lot of the little things right, um, like the coding, the stock cable. This is a prototype. Um, I have the XM1 RGB handy to show off what their stock cable looks like. As you can see, um, incredible flexibility, almost at that level of a paracord. Um, so they got that right. They had the skates right as well um, when they switched to this larger design. The clicks are Kale 8.0. Some people complain that they're heavy, um, but I do find them to be spammable, but definitely way heavier than something like a standard Omron. The weight is 70 grams with a just incredible incredible quality feeling. I've had this unit for what feels like easily over a year now, and it just feels exactly as good as day one with a ton of use on it. And they really got all of the features right. It was solid performance, solid quality for $60. I did recently order one from Amazon, and I literally received a Microsoft mouse. I'll leave the TikTok video I did about that in the description. That was weird. I doubt that'll happen to many people. Um, probably just Amazon fucking with me. Um, but yeah, XM1R number three. It's unfortunate that they got hit so hard by the chip shortage because I'm sure they would have released something else by now. At number two is going to be the Zowie C series, which is going to be surprising probably to people who didn't watch the reviews of these mice. By the way, for every mouse I've mentioned in this video, there is a full length review if you feel like I did not go into detail enough, which honestly, this is just a top five list quick overview. Um, so I am not going into detail enough. So check those out if you're interested. But yeah, mainly the S2C and the EC3C. I gave the seal of approval to both of these mice 
mice because I think that they are very solid. When I saw that Zowie released the C-Series, I wasn't expecting much, but these are just such like well-appreciated improvements of their past mice. Um, first thing is the cable. It is a bit thicker, and as you can see, it's not as flexible as something like the XM1 RGB cable I showed earlier, but when you throw it in a bungee, it is not a hindrance at all. The stress relief is angled up extremely high and is so much better than the old rubber cables they used to use. Still using the black um, skates and they have the PTFE options available for like $5. I've never bought them. But overall, it's the same shapes, same like in-hand quality feeling, slightly lower weights, improved button feeling overall. And my S2C, the main clicks and the side buttons are essentially perfect. And the same goes for my EC3C. Zowie knows how to make a good feeling mouse. But yeah, I just wanna take a quick second to step back and explain my actual perspective on mice and my personal preference. So my hand size is 20 by 11. So larger hands, that's something to consider whenever I say anything about shape. Because if your hands are significantly smaller and you use a different grip style than me, the recommendations probably won't make as much sense. And also something I value heavily in mice is a good quality feeling. I don't recommend cheap, like creaky products. That's just something I've never been able to stand personally. But my shape and weight preference is generally small to medium ambi mice that are made for claw grip in the 60 to 70 gram weight range. Um, I used to think that lighter was always better, um, but then I realized that there is a actual like stability trade-off and having a mouse, like I think the S2C is 73 grams. It feels very good quality wise. It's good weight balancing wise. Well, the cable's fucking with the weight balance test, um, but you get what I'm saying. All of the aspects of it feel good and it's just something I'm comfortable with using. Um, so anything in the Zowie C-Series, it's gonna come down to what shape you prefer, but all of their models are eventually getting that upgrade. Um, so it's something to look out for. Now I think it's time for some honorable mentions. After talking about Zowie, it only makes sense to talk about Vaxi, which was actually founded by some of the former mouse designers at Zowie. Um, they're honestly like the quality is interchangeable with Zowie. They have very good Guano switches, light, spammable. Um, the cables are the one factor that really just isn't as good as you can see. Um, not a very flexible cable. In a bungee, it's playable, um, but it could definitely be better. Other than that, though, their shapes are, I don't want to say spin-offs because it seems like it doesn't give them much credit, um, but like altered versions of other Zowie shapes that some people I'm sure will prefer. Uh, me personally, I have been more satisfied with the Zowie experience, but as Baxi keeps making products, I'm sure they will be a bigger name in mice. Um, but yeah, that, oh, another on Honorable mention, how could I forget the final meme Starlight 12? Obviously, the Starlight 12, I didn't put it on this list because you cannot buy it. There is a drop coming up in just over a week, though, for the Starlight Phantom, which is going to be a different colorway with Kale 8.0s and other changes. I'll review it when it comes out. Um, but yeah, these are the lightest wireless mice. I know I just said I don't always think lighter is better, um, but even if you're the biggest Final Mouse hater, you have to give them credit. Who else? has a sub 45 gram wireless mouse. Um, I said before, um, I was talking about Endgame that nobody's really pushing the boundaries. I think Final Mouse definitely is, but due to how they operate with the limited drop format, not everybody gets to experience what they put out, so it doesn't make sense to really put at the top of the list, but these are still insane mice. They were my main for the majority of the summer, and honestly, if I wasn't reviewing, I'm pretty sure I would mainly be using this, the Zowie S2, and the number one mouse, which is going to be a shock to many, I would presume, the G Pro X Super Light. I find it hard to believe that many people have not heard about the Super Light by now. These are not the stock mouse feet, by the way. These are glass skates. A review will be coming soon. It looks fucking weird. I understand. Um, but yeah, the 60 grams when it dropped, which I presume is around a year ago, this is the same unit and it has not developed a single quality issue. And this is one of the mice that I have put the most time on out of any mouse ever. I'm so comfortable with the mouse as a whole that I basically use it as a control for any mouse I'm reviewing when I'm comparing them um, to see if, if anything can be better than the super light. It just all around. 
um, because this is a wireless mouse. It's 60 grams, like I said, good weight balancing. The Omron switches, people will just close their eyes and complain because it's Omron, uh, but ultimately they feel consistent, they feel good, and they have felt the same for the entire duration of my time using the mouse. This is the only thing, the click wobble, it has been there since day one. It hasn't gotten any worse and it still has not affected me in game. There is the side button pre-travel, but when you're actually clicking the buttons fast, you don't notice it. And plenty of people use it in Fortnite. They're completely usable in game. The battery life is really the gold standard. This lasts multiple weeks to a month on a single charge. Yes, it's USB-C, oh my God. Um, but just how long it lasts, it's no big deal to me whatsoever. I would say it's the gold standard for sensor performance, but I think that's the Razer with the Focus Plus sensor, um, the Razer Viper Ultimate, I mean. But I just personally have a lot of gripes with this mouse where it could be an honorable mention. I don't like the recessed side buttons, these side grips. My optical switches have become creaky, but they still feel fine performance-wise and the overall flatness of the shape, but the mouse is solid, um, so I guess it will be another honorable mention, but it just doesn't compare to the super light in hand just overall experience-wise. I personally think the Viper Ultimate is due for a revision, maybe without the right-handed side buttons and a lighter weight, just like go the super light route or just do something. It's been a while since Razer has made a new flagship, um, but yeah, that seems... Oh, wait, should I talk more about the super light? Yeah, why not? It's a safe shape, yes. Um, I don't know how that's really a bad thing. I find it to be one of the better shapes for claw grip. Um, if you like the S2, I don't know what you would hate about the super light, but I see people who seem to have that preference. So I just find it to be a good shape. I don't think it's an overrated mouse, safe for lots of grips, lots of hand sizes. And now it's only $136, whoa. It's like $14 cheaper than it was before. Wow, if you put that much into Bitcoin in like 2009, you would have an unbelievable amount of money. Um, but that's going to be all for this top five list. As always, if you enjoyed the list, do be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And also, if you're looking for the top five wireless only mice, because this was a horrible, dismal list featuring lots of mice with wires. Um, yeah, be on the lookout for that as well. They'll have um, more new names while this was generally stuff I've talked about before. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all. Let me know what your top five is in the comments below. And uh, yeah, like and sub. Peace.